Baxter with me, Nancy Gianni, and I'm here with the Gigi of Gigi's Playhouse. The Gigi of Gigi's Playhouse. And we are mm-hmm. here to talk to some amazing people. And today we have an awesome, awesome guest. But before we get on that, mm-hmm. we want to talk about the Something Extra podcast and what that's all about. What is a little something extra? Your little something extra, Jeej, is your superpower. Not in the sense that you can fly or leap from buildings, but that you aspire and motivate other people to be better every single day, to be kind, to be generous. You motivate people to chase their dreams. That's a superpower. So right now what we want to talk about is your superpower. What is your superpower, Jeej? To be the Jeej. And ambassador for Down Syndrome. To be the Gigi. That's a pretty big deal. And yeah. that is a big superpower because when you're the Gigi, you have to mm-hmm. actually raise yourself up and you have to do good things so that other people do good things, right? right. You have to work hard and inspire people and let them see that your mm-hmm. Down Syndrome is not going to let you down, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's going to pick you up and mm-hmm. catapult you out into the world, right? Right. Because you have to work hard. Yeah. Yes. So your superpower is showing others how to work hard and chase your dreams. And I love that about you. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we have our something extra moment. Whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. So these are our something extra moments for the week. Jeej, what was your spe- something extra moment for the week? Yesterday, it was my Gigi's heart surgery anniversary. It, it, it was 18... 18- 18 years ago, and I was very, very brave. You were very brave during your open heart surgery? Yes. Yes. So yesterday was Gigi's open heart surgery anniversary. And we celebrate that, don't we? Yes, Because 18 years ago, we were blessed by some doctor's hands that were able to fix your heart. And now you're doing fantastic and living life, and you're healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. So that was something that we choose to bring back and celebrate. My something extra (laughs) moment this week was when that I got I got the news that Bain and Company, which is like Mm -hmm. the most prestigious um, management consulting company in the world, has chosen Gigi's Playhouse as their adopt an org organization for the year. So they are adopting Gigi's Playhouse in the year 2021 which means they're going to help us strategically. They're going to help us with fundraising. They're going to help us in every aspect of running our organization. So, And we need that this year. With COVID this year, we had to put all of our programs virtual, which was very hard but very much needed for all of our families. We had to cancel 4,400 hours of free therapeutic and educational programs. And play openings, too. And the Playhouse openings. We had to cancel everything. Because but you know what? Because of COVID. But you know what that did? <laughs> that opened us up to even more people. When Bain adopted us, it just kind of made me feel like, ah, we can breathe a little bit. And and a something extra moment is something, yes, that happened earlier in the week, but it's something you reflect back on and bring all that energy and excitement back again. Talk about it. Bring it back. It shouldn't just be, you know, something that happened and, okay, great. Let's celebrate it over and over. Let's celebrate your heart anniversary. Let's be happy about it. Right. Let's go out for lunch. What do yeah. you think? Let's do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So speaking of something extra, I am so beyond excited to tell you guys about our guest today, Dennis Dixon. He is absolutely amazing. If you can tune into anything today, tune into this because it's going (laughs) to be awesome. I'm actually going to read you his bio in his words. So this is what he wrote to us about himself. Hello, my name is Dennis Shorty. Dixon. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. I was born with Down syndrome. I was raised up living in an orphanage, also the state hospital. Back in them days with me being in an orphan, that made me a ward of the state, especially since I have Downs. I went back and forth till I was 10 years old. Then I went and lived with some people till I turned 16 and I ran away. By the time I was 18, I was living at a job corps in Royal, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Searcy and then to Beebe, and I've been here ever since. As a young adult, I got in a lot of trouble once I left the job corps. I stayed in and out of trouble till I was about 35. So with that being said, I wasn't able to hold a so-called real job. So I mowed yards and worked for a temp service. Plus, I worked as a bouncer at a nightclub three nights a week for about four years. Long story short, one day a family befriended me. 
They was driving and seen me sleeping in my car. Mm. And the wife told her husband, is that the guy who mowed our lawn last week? Mm. And she told him, yes, it is. She said, go get him and bring him to the house. I stayed eight months with them. Long story short, he told me if I would get cleaned up, that they would help me restart my life. So I got clean up and went to college and got me a working job for a trucking company mm. that hauled the mail to the post offices around the world. Almost four years ago, I got married to a wonderful lady. I also wanted to give back to society and help people with Down syndrome. And I, I had seen on Facebook a group mm. about Down syndrome. Long story short, I found out about Gigi's Playhouse. Mm. And now I'm a self-advocate board member of the Gigi's in Little Rock, Arkansas. So now it is my honor and privilege to introduce... Dennis Dixon. Dennis Dixon to the Little Something Extra podcast. Welcome, Dennis. We're so excited to have you. All right. How y'all doing? Doing fantastic. Hey, Dennis. I'm so excited to meet you. I love the South. I wore my cowboy boots just for you today. Did you hear that? She wore her cowboy boots just for you. And you know what? I wore my snakeskin boots for you. Look at that. We're awesome. all we're all awesome. about the South, just for you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> whoop, whoop. We love it. So, Dennis, I want you to share some of your your story with us. I want you to start way back at your birth and tell us what's up, man. Tell us your story. Well, let's say let me let me say um, I was born and I was put up for adoption at the age of two years old and. Back in them days down south, you, you, if you had a disability, you was considered a ward of the state. So I, I got put in an orphanage. And then later on, like when I got older, they started switching me over from the state to the back and forth from the state hospital to the orphanage. Got it. And I lived in between the state hospital and the orphanage from the time I was two years old until I was. Uh, 10 years old. Back in them days, if you was uh, born out of wedlock, the Catholics kind of over, you know, didn't see, you know. So my, with me, have, the doctors told my real mama that I was going to be all deformed and crippled and all that stuff. Because, mm. you know, back then, they didn't know what Down syndrome was, especially down south. So anyway, so my my real grandma and grandpa convinced my real mama to put me up for adoption. Mm. So I got put in the orphanage, under a Catholic orphanage. And then when I got old enough, they they switched me over to the state hospital. It was my, you know, with people with um, disability down there, you get, um, you get, you have to go to the state, you was awarded to the state. Mm. But anyway, so I stayed there uh, back and forth between the state hospital and the orphanage until I like ten, uh, nine years old. And then I left with the family when I was 10. And I started first grade when I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. Started first grade when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a person like uh, at, a, at the age of 11 starting? Cause usually a person uh, at 11 years old start first grade and, and they first graders are usually like five years old. Yeah. So you imagine how hard that, that was? Oh, gosh. I, I can't imagine, Dennis. I can't. Well, it ain't easy. Let me tell you what. And as the, as the years went by, it got, you know, when I got the relapse and stuff, you know, there I was, you know. When I didn't want it. Somewhere in the back of my head, I knew I didn't want to live in, that, in, the, in the controlled environment. So at the age of 16, I left where I was at. And I can't, I went to Job Corps. Hmm. Went to Job Corps, stayed there for like three years. That's just a, a job placement? Yeah, yeah. Well, back in them days, they considered Job Corps either you, um, either, either you straightened up or they shipped you out. So oh. they, um, cause that was one way, and back then it was for people with, Troubles, you know, and stuff like that. Gotcha. Because, because I was on my way to somewhere else, you know. Yeah. But 
I got a, I got a training there, and I got other, you know learn a lot of stuff. And first with Down syndrome, you know, and me I, at that time I didn't know that much about Down syndrome, you know. I just let you know I didn't know what kind I had. Yeah. I didn't find what kind of, uh, of Down syndrome I had until I was like 18 years old. Mm. Then they uh, said I had mosaic Down syndrome. Which is pretty rare. Yeah, it is pretty rare. I've already done a lot of studying on it. It's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. And, and but I'm, they consider me a high function Down syndrome. I consider you just awesome, period. Yeah. But listen to this. When I um, I think if I hadn't done what I did, I'd be still living in a controlled environment. But you know, so I I knew back, and even psychologists still today say you better off now than he was back in them days. Growing up, the job corps it was rough. It was rough, but I I withstood it, and then. When I moved from the job court to uh, to Searcy, Arkansas, and when I got to Searcy, I just did tail around stuff because I just I was doing at that time I was doing stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing. Uh oh, being a bad boy. Oh boy, Dennis. I was staying in and out of jail, oh, the mischief stuff, you know. Mm hmm. And, and anyway, so. I got put on probation and stuff like that. And at that time, I couldn't get a real job. And I didn't want to live on no disability shit. So I went to work. Yeah, good for you. I like that. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to live on, I could have drawn a check all my life, but it didn't. I worked up until 2008. But anyway, they um, I worked for a temp service. And I, they would send me just all kind of jobs and stuff. Who were you living with at that time? Myself. Yourself? Yeah, I was living on the streets and living oh, like couch to couch. Oh, goodness. And I lived out of trash cans, believe it or not, for a little while. Mm. Wow. Seriously, seriously, I did. So that happened. So that went on for a couple of years, you know, me living like that lifestyle, you know. Because mm -hmm. every time, I, every time, every time I would try to get cleaned up, I go right back to the, you know, the whole thing. But anyway, long story short, about four years after that, I got cleaned up. A friend of mine, I, that I bought their yard for, her, came by one day, him and his wife, and they seen me sleeping in my car. And so. She said, ain't that guy, guy that um, bugs our yard? And her husband said, yep, that is. Well, anyway, she said, you go back and you get him and you tell him to come to the house. Well, anyway, I stayed there for eight months. But in that time, though, he told me if I would get cleaned up and stay out of trouble, he would help me get a real good job. So that's where I, my, my life actually started changing. Wow. You know what? Somebody I, believed in you. Somebody cared about you and somebody loved you. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, but, um, let me tell you what, it, I, it wasn't easy. Mm -mm. So I went to, so he gave me, a, he, I went to um, apply for that job. I got it within a week. Uh, so I started working for a company called Pat Salmonson. They hauled the U.S. mail. Mm. So I was their service man slash fuel man. Anytime a truck come in, if it needs service, I would serve, you know, or if it needs to be majorly fixed, I'd send it to the mechanic. And if it needs buff tires and all that crap. Before I got that job though, the main job, uh, while I was still in trouble, I um, went to work for a um, uh, grocery, a grocery store. And also at night, I would be a bouncer at a nightclub. These guys played a trick on me, and I didn't know about it until after the fact. Well, anyway, this guy comes up, and they tell, um, they say, hey, remember, you can't let nobody park up in the front door. So I proceeded to go tell this man. 
he did uh, back off and go somewhere to the park on, on down the other side. And he said, son, i tell you what. Uh, I said, sir, I'm not your son. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hungry, by you the way. You got a smart little mouth there. <laughs> yeah, I am. But anyway, so I kept talking kept talk to him, telling him, then everybody behind me was giggling, and I didn't know what was going on. And so this guy, my boss, he walks up and taps me on the shoulder. He said, um, Shorty, that man right there, you um, say that too, is your boss. Oh, Jesus. He, I said, he's... Uh, she said, he's our owner. Well, anyway, he said, but he said, I'm glad. So they called me, the the bouncers started calling me the pit bull. <laughs> I like it. Tough guy, right? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Did the, I was, owner, did the owner finally understand that you were a good guy? Yeah, yeah. His daddy come up to me and he said, I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> good. You were doing what you were told. Yeah. But you never figure a guy like uh, with a downs be a um, no a bouncer, you know. No, I love it that you were able to do that. So that all through that stuff, I've learned through life. You know, everything I've known today is the cause of of living it. I guess you know. That's right. Forcing, I forced myself to live it. Right, and you did it. You know, I mean, look, look what came out of that. You're pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. They say if I and I know this for a fact. If I hadn't done what I did, I'd still be living in a controlled environment. Yeah, you would. I didn't like that. No. Well, you know what? Because people were people were treating you different because they didn't realize all the potential that you had. They didn't know. Right. But um, here I am. I'm fifty. Cause they told me I wouldn't live past thirty-five. And look at you. And that's what I'm saying. Look at me now. I'm 56 year old. All right. Where does your wife come into the picture? Oh, she come into the picture about four years ago. Nice. And we met at the bar. Oh, cool. At the bar you were bouncing yeah. at? No. Oh. I, this one is a bit that I, when I left that lifestyle, when I started my new job and stuff, got cleaned up, I went away from that lifestyle. Good for you. Yeah, because I knew if I stayed in that lifestyle, I'd be in jail right now. Matter of fact, I've, I've been told if I get in trouble again, I'll get the other charges brought back up to me and the charges that work. So That's right, man. You got to stay in the straight and narrow now. Yeah, I've been clean since 2001, so. Good for you. I didn't find out about GG's until about two, two years ago. Okay, when I found out about GG's, I was on Facebook. Ah. And I always and I always knew I wanted to do something with um help people like me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got in contact with somebody. Oh, my first event with uh, GG's was the gala. Oh, cool. It's a great yeah, one. That was my first event. Well, actually the grand opening. The grand the gala, then the grand opening. Mm -hmm. That's where I bet you. You and Gigi. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. I remember y'all signed my book. Yep. We did. That's awesome. But um, I, here's what I think. People with Down syndrome or any disability, they should have a chance in life other than, you know, living in a controlled environment. That's my feeling. I hear you. I feel, yeah, I, I feel like this. Cause I've had it rough. I ain't, you know, for Down syndrome, I've had I've had it rough. I didn't use my disability as a crutch, though. Yep. And that's one thing I cause. Like I got a buddy down the road. He's more capable than me to go to work, and he sits on his butt at home. And his mama says, "If Shorty can get out and go to work at twelve hour shift, <laughs> that's where I work at twelve hour shift every day." Yeah. He said, "You can." She said, "You can get up and go do it." Cause Shorty's got stuff probably going on and he got, you know. He gets up and does it. That's yeah. awesome. You were motivated. Well, I'm so glad that you joined the board at Gigi's Playhouse and you're giving other people with Down syndrome a voice and you're giving a voice to Down syndrome and you're sharing your story. I think it's really important. Dennis, I think you're so cool. I have Down syndrome too. Hey, Dennis, I have a question for you. 
Why makes you happy? Well, being, being able to um, conversate with people and watch TV and being able to do this now, being able to use this platform and whatever platform I can to get my little story across. What makes you sad? Seeing people, seeing people get up, people with disabilities getting, you're not mistreated. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that one, man. What are you most proud of? My pro most proud thing is me do, uh, leaving where I was at, the situation I was in, and doing what I was doing. If you had one message to tell the world, what would it be? I would tell them to quit labeling. Society labels people. Mm. That's the situation we're in right now. People with disability, they do not. Oh, I'm I'm very passionate about this. When when I was born, when they, when I was born and put in the state hospital, they labeled me. Nobody should be labeled. That that just tears me up when knowing somebody labels you. So you don't know people. They don't know you. Look at me. Why they? Cause they think they thought I was gonna be all crippled and stuff. Look at me. I'm not crippled. I can talk. I went to college. I forced myself to do all this stuff. But labeling that that is a oh that's a no no to me. People would look at me and say, Hey, you ain't gonna mount to nothing, guess what? I proved them wrong. I proved them wrong. You sure did. You still are proving them wrong. Yeah, still today. But since I've started doing stuff, since I've been on with the GD stuff, I've been m more motivated now that I'm able to, to um, you know, do what I'm doing because I feel like I'll be able to re reach out because, you nope, know, I went, I went to, uh, before all this COVID stuff, mm -hmm. uh, me and Kay and Celeste, we went to the, we, we did an interview on TV about the GGs. And that's, that's stuff I like to do, you know, help spread the word out that, you know, there's places where you can get help and whatever. And in fact, so, you know, because I feel like if this would, if they would have had this back when I was born, it would be a lot better. Do you know this? They told me, they told me a long time ago, if they, if, uh, if, they would have let me go to school when I was supposed to. A lot of this, a lot of my stuff would be going on right now. I agree with you. And it aggravates me to know that people, you know, stereotype other people like us. I don't believe in stereotyping. No. Don't believe in labeling. And now our governor in the state of Arkansas has took the word retarded out of the law. You can't, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He just did that. He did that just this past year. You can't use the word retorted in the, in, he ain't got that word retorted in, in the um, constitution thing, you know. Yeah. Well, it needed to be done. People don't need to be well, using that word. In I, I, I help with that because I, I tend in my little peace of mind because I know somebody at the state office. Yeah. So I, but I ain't saying I did it. I'm just, there's a lot of people that did it. I, there was a petition to, to have it done. And I, for some reason, I don't remember how, but I got to sign that petition. That's fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you found your voice, brother, because you, you deserve it. You've worked too hard. And, and I agree. Had you had a different beginning, life would be a lot different. But I'm so grateful yeah. that, that, that you found it within yourself to pick yourself back up. I think that's... That's really cool. My next question was going to be, what What do you think your superpower is? But I, I, I think your superpower, I think I know what your superpower is. What do you think your superpower is? My voice. Yeah. The, the, the be motivated to tell people. And because if I, here's what I tell people right now. If I can do it, you can do it. That's right. Don't let, don't let your disability define you. You need to define that disability. That's right, brother. Preach it. Say it again. 
That and is. that can go for those so-called normal people too. You know that, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. People ask me, they say, how do you get along so well? I say, well, motivation. And stuff like that. I say, that if I keep myself motivated, mm. I'm good. Yep. And now that I got found y'all, guess what? It mm. motivates me more. I'm so glad. Believe it or not, you just don't, you just don't realize. Like I was telling Franco yesterday, I'm ready. Yeah. So I went on and kept trying to do stuff like that. And, but anyway, they, they, um, I proved them wrong. I proved, I'm still proving people wrong today. There's nothing you can't do. Just got to yeah. put your mind to it, right? Yeah. But, um, but I, but what bothered me the most when I was younger, it's had to start first grade at 11 years old. I, I when can I, imagine. Whenever, whenever, um, I got to realize and all this stuff, you know, I knew in the back of my head, I wouldn't want to think the lifestyle. So I quit in seventh grade, quit school. But now I went back though and got my GED. And then I got, went to, I got a, almost got my associate's degree. Good for you. That is fantastic. I, I tried to get a job with the social services down here in Little Rock. Mm -hmm or Cersei, they told me with me having downs, they wouldn't let me have my, the job, even what? though I was qualified. Oh my goodness. So, and I went to school to be a social worker. That's, yep, that's ridiculous. Sure did. That, that diagnosis keeps getting you slapped back in the face, doesn't it? Yeah, but I kept going though. I went, you know, it bothered me. That's why I, not, I hate that label in the system, you know. I do too. I do too. Well, I'm so glad to have you out there fighting for fighting for all of our families, fighting for yourself, fighting for Gigi and every person with a disability and giving them that voice and making sure people don't label them us and stereotype us. It's it happens. Yeah, I don't time. like that. See, that's that bothered me. I know. Do you have anything else? So we're going to wrap up today's segment, which was awesome with Dennis Dixon. Mm -hmm. It was so cool hearing your story and what you were able to overcome as a child and as an adult. Yeah. I mean, the, the stuff that you've been able to overcome. And then what I love about what you're doing now is you're not bitter. You are going back trying to create change. So it doesn't yeah, happen that's to somebody what I'm else. That is change is good. Yes, that's what you're working towards. And that makes yep. me so proud of you. I'm so beyond proud of you, Dennis. I knew when I met you that you are somebody that I had to, to know more about. And I'm so glad that we're going to be able to move forward in life together because I think we can do amazing things together to help change the world. In my eyes, yeah. you're not supposed to mistreat nobody. No, you are not. And, and those are the eyes I want the rest of the world looking through. Yeah, right. I think a person with Down syndrome or any disability should have a voice. And then if they can do it, let them do it. Yeah. If they, not, you know, then help them, to, you know. Help them to grow better. that voice. That's right. That's what it's all about. People helping each other out. Well, I'm proud of you, man. And I'm proud to know you today. So thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for being on what, Cheech? Something extra. Woo, something extra, because you are something extra, and you have something extra. And thank you for sharing it with us, Dennis. Thank you for putting your voice out there and your heart out there to let people I, know, because you are making change. I want to, can I say this real quick? Of course, quick? of course. I'm, I'm very honored and extremely proud that y'all let me use this platform. All right, we love you so much. Thank you so much. Mwah. Peace. What? An absolutely incredible story. Wasn't Dennis amazing? Yes. He's had to put up with a lot in his life, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, he definitely inspired me. And he also gave us some really good advice on how to treat others. Do you have any tips for us on how we should treat people? Oh, geez. Do you say tips? Oh, geez, I did. <laughs> tips! Woo! Don't judge people. Be, be nice. Give couple, give compliments to make people feel good. Always how much they mean to you. Tell people you, you love them every day. Be generous and 
be generous, be be something, and be kind. Wake up and say thank you to God. Every day. Every day. I love that. Those are some awesome t- I'm not going to do it. I know. <laughs> Next time I'm just going to say, that is good advice. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You can say whatever you want. Gigi, <laughs> I loved all of those things that you said because I think it's so important. Even if people <laughs> only did one of those things today, it would really make somebody's day. <laughs> so I would ask that everybody tell somebody you love them today. Be <laughs> Generation G today. And like you said, wake up. Or go to sleep and say thank you to God. Because again, we've talked about this before. When you say thank you, and when you say thank you to God, you can't help but smile. That Mm. means you start your day and you end your day with a smile on your face, right? Right. So we love that. Take one little tip. Give a compliment to someone. Do something today, and that ripple effect will take over. Mm -hmm. Your something extra will take over, and people will continue to do that and help others. And that's all we're looking for in this world is acceptance. Did you say tips again? I did not. No, I I did did not. I didn't say it again. I didn't. I did. did. Tips. And on that note, (laughs) this is Nancy and the Gigi (laughs) signing off, and we are so (laughs) grateful to have you. Go out there and be Generation G and change the world. Right? Right. All right. Peace out.